Hello guys, TapHD here and welcome back to another video and this is part 2 to the video I put out last week looking at my phone collection now. These are the more modern phones, I did want to do it all in one video but it would have been too long. If you haven't seen the first part about the older phones you should go and watch that and then when you've seen that you can come back here or do it the other way around. Watch this first, I don't really mind. Okay, and it's now time to look inside the second box, and these are more modern phones. These are all smartphones. The first two things in here are actually iPod Touches, an iPod Touch fourth generation, and a second generation. If you'd like a full video about these, do let me know. But since they're not phones, I'm not really going to talk about them today. The first phone in this box is a black Samsung Galaxy S. Seven. This was my mum's phone until a year and a bit ago when she got the S20 FE. Quite a nice upgrade from a 7 to a 20. This was used for a very long time and as you can see by the screen protector it is quite cracked. The reason she didn't replace the protector is because it's difficult to find ones for this phone. This isn't the edge but it still does have slightly curved edges so all the protectors are just too thin and stupid and leave loads of the screen exposed so she never bothered getting another protector on it. But clearly if this lasted her so many years Samsung must have been doing something right with this phone and it never let her down. She just got a new one because she said that this one was feeling a bit small and getting a little bit slow but nothing catastrophic went wrong. I'm sure she could still be using this if she really wanted to. Next up is another Samsung. This one is one of mine. This is a Galaxy J5 2016. This was a very cheap phone. I got this in 2017, I believe. Used it for exactly 364 days before getting my iPhone 8 Plus. And I can say right now, this is the best phone I have ever owned. It was only £150, so very low-end phone from Samsung, but I can say this is better than the 8 Plus that I had after it, and I might even go as far as to say that it's better than the S20 Plus, which I use now. This just never had any problems, and it did everything I wanted it to. Of course, the 8 Plus I got after it, we'll talk about later, and I have made videos about that before, about how awful it became. My S20 Plus, we'll also discuss that in a minute, but I just don't think it's as good as this ever was. Never let me down, and I do kind of regret stopping using this and getting the 8 Plus. This never gave me any trouble, and if I could go back to this, and use this as my main phone, I would, I just can't because of how old it is now and it doesn't get software updates and you'll probably never get any new app updates. But if that wasn't the case, I'd be back on this and I would happily use this for probably a good few more years. So yeah, best phone I've ever owned and it's a very cheap one indeed. Next is another Samsung. There seems to be lots of Samsungs in here. This is a white S6. This again was my mother's phone. It's the one she used before she got the S7. This one is in great condition but it's mainly in great condition because of how many times it had to go back to Samsung to have bits replaced. It's not particularly this phone's fault it had to go back to Samsung so many times. Well the first time was kind of its fault. The screen decided it didn't want to live anymore and got loads of vertical lines down it meaning you couldn't see anything that was going on. Usually that happens when it's been hit or dropped. That did not happen. This phone just decided that it wanted to have loads of lines on the screen. So we took it to Samsung. They replaced the screen after deciding that, yeah, it was the phone's fault and we hadn't dropped it. We got it home and the screen was starting to stick up at the bottom of both sides. It was like it hadn't been stuck down because I think these screens are glued down. So it seemed like they hadn't glued it down for some reason, which was strange. So we went back. They replaced the screen again. And this time the touch just didn't work and they didn't test it before they gave the phone back. They said that it was our fault for putting a screen protector on it and the protector was too thick. That was not the case. They just put a stupid screen on it which didn't work and they didn't bother to test it before giving it back. So yet again it had another screen put on it and that time that screen was fine and that is the screen which is still on here. Now since it had so many screens it's got no burning. This is of course an OLED so this screen is pretty much like new and so is the rest of this device. It's in 
very good condition. Apart from all the silly things that Samsung did, this phone was a great phone and it never let my mum down. She only upgraded to the S7 because her contract ended for this one. I guess she could have got a SIM only deal and kept using this. That would have saved her some money, but she chose not to. She chose to get the S7. Whether that was the right decision or not, I don't know. The S7 served her well, so I'm guessing it was a good decision to upgrade to that. Next is yet another Samsung. This is probably the oldest one here. This is a Galaxy S4. This was owned by my grandfather. He had this after upgrading from the Blackberry that I've already shown you. That was his phone for a while. He dropped it in a swimming pool. Somehow it still worked and it never had any problems when I had it, but he upgraded to this. This is an S4. He got the fancy case which changed the back of the phone which is quite nice it's showing lots of wear these days the whole phone is to be honest you can see the coloring is coming off from the front and the sides the back is also kind of falling off i actually have never made a video about this i was intending to i've had this for about two years just waiting for me to make a video about it the reason i haven't is because the charging port is kind of loose you can plug a charger into it it'll start to light up but then it'll just cut off again and you just wiggle it about sometimes it comes back sometimes it doesn't so i don't know what's wrong with the charging port maybe it's just very dirty or maybe there's something wrong with it so if i can get this thing to boot up i will make a full video on it in the future moving away from samsung's this is a sony this is a sony xperia e4 this is a very very low-end phone i think it was about 85 pounds new i used this for about a year from 2015 to 2016 and it did exactly what i needed it to it did phone functions just fine it ran android 4.4 kitkat i believe so of course now these days apps won't really support that i suppose i could install a different version of android on here if i wanted to but this was very good for the price and it did exactly what i needed it to after using this i went back to the phone i had before this i'm not exactly sure why i did because it was really a downgrade in quite a lot of ways and that phone i went back to and had before that was this iPhone 4S. This is a white 16 gigabyte 4S. This is one my mother had from new. Then I got it after she upgraded. I used this from about 2013 to 2015 and then went back to it from 2016 to 17 when I got the J5. This is still on iOS 5. I never updated it so that made life very hard trying to use iOS 5 on this thing. Of course, this is a tiny device anyway, a three and a half inch screen. And trying to use iOS 5 when no apps really work, it was difficult and that's what really pushed me to get the J5. I knew that it would probably be worse in quite a lot of ways being a low end phone, but I enjoyed that phone a lot. It was so much better than this because I could actually install apps. But this is a great phone. Such a great looking phone, great feeling phone. And because it's still on iOS 5, it runs absolutely great. It's not laggy. It's not a complete laggy mess like most of these are now, the ones which run iOS 9. So this one is still a nice running example. The next iPhone in here is probably the worst iPhone ever made. It is, of course, the 5C. It's just a 5 that was released a year later in a plastic case. It appealed to younger people. I think it was mostly younger people who bought this, but this is the phone my mother got after she gave the 4S to me, and this was an awful phone. The speaker died in it, so that had to be replaced. The screen started to pop up at the bottom, which wasn't great, and it was just so laggy and crashed all the time. So she only used it for about nine months and then just got rid of it. It was awful. And I never used it as my main phone just because I knew how awful it was for her. It would have been a lot better for me to use this in terms of up-to-dateness compared to the 4S, but I just knew that this thing would be horrible to use, so that's why I just kept with the 4S. I did not have the patience for this thing to be crashing every minute or so, and it was just stupid. I hate this phone, but it is a quite nice looking one, but I think most people in the world hate these 5Cs, so I'm definitely not alone with that. 
The final foam from the box is this. I believe this is an LG G2 Mini. This was given to me by a friend. They gave it to me to make a video about a couple of years ago. And I actually did make that video, but I never published it. So I did actually use this phone for a little while with the remote Panasonic app on it to control my camera. That actually worked out very well but the charging port on this is funny like on the S4 so once the battery ran out I tried charging it and it wouldn't charge sometimes it then would light up charging other times it wouldn't so at the minute this thing is dead and I can't get it to charge and that is honestly a shame this is quite a nice little phone it is nice and compact it can fit in my hand and I think that if I could install a different version of Android on here not the stock one this might actually still be capable in some aspects but of course I'll have to try and fix the charging port first so maybe in the future we'll try fixing the charging port on this thing then we can make a full video about it like I intended on doing a couple of years ago. Now we are on to the final two phones. This is my iPhone 8 Plus. Hideous device. I hate it and if you want to know more about that there are videos on the channel. The main problem with it is that it's full the storage is full and it won't let me get anything off it. I plug it into my Mac and it just crashes my Mac and crashes the phone. I plug it into a Windows computer, sometimes it shows up and I can start getting my files off it and then it just crashes and won't reconnect or sometimes it just won't connect at all. So this thing annoys me so much. I think I'm finally going to get the photos off here by maybe getting one of those USB sticks with a lightning connection on it so I can just transfer everything to that or I might just have to pay for a bigger iCloud subscription and back up everything onto there then delete it off the phone. I'm really not too sure but this thing just angers me every time I see it but I still have to have it turned on because I still use my Apple Watch and that connects to this phone so this thing is always on even though it does make me very very angry and the final phone here is my S20 plus I've had this thing for going on for two years I would guess at this point and this is so much better in pretty much every way than the 8 plus but before I said that the J5 was still better and I do think that is the case. This thing just lags sometimes. It's got a 120 hertz display, so you would expect it to be nice and responsive most of the time, but it just isn't. It lags quite a lot. It has done since it was new, so it's not because it's now coming up for being two years old. It's just, I don't know what's up with it. Maybe because it's the Exynos version, not the Snapdragon. Maybe that is why it's a bit laggy, but I don't. Really, no, I'm still going to use it for as long as I can because I don't really want to buy another phone. I don't really like phones. There's not many that I really get along with and enjoy a lot. So I will be keeping this for as long as I can. It's not a bad phone. It's just annoying that for how much it costs, it is a bit laggy, but I can get over it. It's not really that bad. So there we are. That is all the phones that I'm going to show you today. I'm pretty sure this is all of them, although I may have lost some and they might be somewhere else that I just can't remember. But this is all the ones which I know that I definitely have. So hopefully this was interesting in some way just to see what I've got. And it is cool to see how technology has progressed from things like this to much more modern things like this. So thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully this was interesting in some way and if you would like to see some in-depth videos about some of these in the future please do let me know. And if you would like to see a video about my iPod touches do let me know about that also. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.